Hi, welcome to the virtual lab um, instructions. This is essentially unit point to be part two. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you're going to perform the virtual lab, the titration. So at this moment, you should have already opened up Google Classroom and you should have read through the instructions page. And um, you should also have a copy of the virtual lab which you should get from the sub. If you don't have a copy from the sub, ask the sub for the virtual lab handouts. All right, now once you have that, you're gonna start the virtual lab. So you're gonna open up this link. Um, you just click on this and in the instruction page and you get to this link. And this is a virtual lab. So I'm gonna walk you through how do we use this. Essentially what this is, is like all the glassware and chemicals and materials you use in the lab, you're gonna do those, you're gonna use those things virtually. So that means that the good thing is that there are no, there's no cleanup, but um, that means that you, you will need to know a few things about how to use this. After um, I demo part one, then I'm gonna um, start you off on part two, get you guys started, and then you're going to um, go ahead and um, you can either watch this and do it with me, or you can go ahead and do the lab afterward. I will also at the end just put up some key things to remember. All right, so let's get started. What you'll notice is that on the left-hand side you have your stock room, right-hand side the workbench. So the materials or items from the stock room are going to, you're gonna drag over to the workbench. The stock room has three parts, solutions, and you can take a look at them now. We'll be using all of the solutions that you see here. Then you have glassware. The only gla piece of glassware we need here is a 250 Erlenmeyer, which is under the Erlenmeyers. And then under other, that's where you will find your bur burette. So burettes are under other. We don't need any of the other tools, but I'll click on them just so you can see what they are. We won't be using a scale. We'll just use sort of the virtual lab method for weighing things out. All right, according to our procedure, here it is. The first thing we need to do is weigh out 3.5 five to four grams of KHP in a clean but not necessarily dry 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Now the this last part here is a, more of a note for if you were doing this in an actual lab and that means you could have just recently rinsed out a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and it's not going to affect anything because for KHP the moles is determined not by um, the volume of the solution um, and the concentration of the solutions, it's really determined by the mass, the amount that you add into. So you want to think back when we made that copper sulfate, that blue solution, and you were asked to calculate the moles of um, copper sulfate. So we're just based, the moles are going to come from the mass that we add. So let's get back to it. We need 3.5 to 4 grams of um, the KHP, and KHP is a solid acid. All right, so how are we going to add this in? We are going to um, get go ahead and get our 250. And going back to the stock room, you may have to click it open again. We're going to go to uh, solutions. That's where all the chemicals are. And we're going to click on KHP. So I just clicked on, I went here and I clicked on this and then it gives me the KHP. All right, so everything I click on, it gets added to the workbench. Now I want to add an um, KHP into my flask. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to drag the KHP bottle on top of the flask. And you're going to do that until you see the plus sign. And that tells you you're ready to add. There are three ways you can add. You can add it precisely with sig figs or realistically. We're going to use precise method because that way you can just enter in the amount that you want. Realistic is so sort of hard to control in this virtual lab. All right, so just a reminder, we need about 3.5 to 4 grams of KHP in our 250. So um, let's say I decide to weigh out 3.88 grams. Okay, go ahead and pour that in. And what you'll notice, it's kind of hard to see here because this is a little far down, but it actually will tell you at the bottom here that it has already been transferred. So um, we know from this that we've actually transferred. It will say at the very bottom that you've transferred the amount. We'll see that. I'll do it again. Um, with something else. Once we're done, we can close that down and um, now we can go on to the step two. Step two says to dissolve the KHP in about 100 milliliters of water and then add three to four drops, which is approximately 0.5 milliliters of phenolphthalein. Okay, so going back to my stock room, I'm gonna open the uh, stock room and all I did was I clicked on distilled water. That's the water we're gonna use. It just means water without a bunch of like salts dissolved in it, like tap water actually does have salts in it. So distilled water is just pretty much pure water. Um, and then again, I wanna add the water to the flask. So I'm gonna drag the water on top, okay? And then they tell me 100 milliliters. So again, I'm using precise. 
100. And I just put pour and the pours it in. And so as you can see here on the bottom, it says that it had 100 milliliters have been transferred. Okay, so let's take a moment and pause now. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our data table, because now you have some data that you wanna write down. For my first trial, you gotta do three trials here. Um, it was 3.88 grams. Um, I can calculate the moles later. Um, so that's the first measurement that I would record here. The next thing, the next step says that um, I need to add some, also need to add some phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is my indicator. It turns pink when um, the acid-base solution is neutralized. So I'm just going to move this over here. All right, so I got the phenolphthalein from my solutions. There it goes in that dropper bottle. Drag it on top to add, and I'm going to add 0.5 milliliters. It said three to four drops, but that's hard to control here, so use the volume readings, and, and the volume readings are in milliliters. So I add, and it tells me uh, that 0.5 has been transferred. So you can always double check at the bottom to make sure you added it. I can close that down now. Okay, now we're on to the next step, which is um, in a burette, we're going to add a four, 45 milliliters of NaOH solution. And um, so for that, I'm going to go to my stock room. I need to get my glassware. I need to get my burette. So glassware, other, that's where the burette is. Go ahead and add that on. And then now we're going to get the solution, the point of the approximately one molar. Oh, look what happens. It said workbench is full. So what this means is you have too many things here on this workbench and it can't add anymore. I think the maximum is five. So what we're going to do is we remove things we don't need. For example, I'm done with the water right now, so I'm going to click on it, make sure the box is highlighted, and then I'm going to um, right-click or double-click if you're using a Chrome, I believe, and to remove it. Make sure you click remove and not remove solid or liquid because what will happen there if you do that, it will um, you'll have to start the lab all over again because it will remove all the liquid or solid. So we're just going to click the very bottom remove. I also don't need the KHP, so I'm going to remove that as well. I'm done with that for right now. And I'm also done with the phenolphthalein. So I can remove as much stuff as I want. But remember, don't hit this. Do not hit this. Hit the remove at the bottom, OK? You'll have to start the lab all over again. All right, so we have everything we need. Um, so now let's grab our NaOH. So now I can do it because the workbench is not full. To add the NaOH to the burette, again, I want to pour the NaOH inside the burette. So I'm going to just drop that on top. And that does it for me. And it tells me to add about 45 milliliters. So let's say I decide to be a little bit different and I add 45.3 I'm going to go ahead and pour that in okay so um what you'll notice that when you did that you actually had the volume reading I just redid it just so you can see it it gives you the volume reading right there this is the initial volume of the burette so we have to read this carefully this is six and that's seven so remember the numbers are going and increasing as you go down this is 6.5 this is 6.6 .6, this is 6.7 so and we have to estimate the last digit since it's exactly at 6.7 we would say 6.70 so here on the initial volume burette volume reading I will say 6.7 seven zero milliliters okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to um let's just move this up a little bit move that up we are now wanting to titrate the KHP with the NOH. So there's NOH inside my burette. I'm going to get rid of the NOH just to remember, I'm just going to hit remove at the bottom, hit the bottom one just to get it out of my way. Okay, and now I'm ready for my titration. To do the titration, what you're going to do is you're going to drag, you're going to try and drag the burette on top of the um, Erlenmeyer to get it to add the liquid to the Erlenmeyer. But as you can see here, when you do that, the plus sign doesn't show up. Why? Because the burette's kind of long. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure that your the flask that you want to add stuff into the burette is up high enough so that when you drag it on top, it can go down low enough to get the plus sign. So I'll show you that again. If your flask was down here, it's too low, and you may not be able to add it. Oh, in this case, I could. Okay, so if it, that's the case, just move the flask up, and then it should be able to add it. And you'll see here now the burette is on top, and you can add. Okay, we're going to pause here because the next thing it says in our step is to calculate how much of a one molar solution you will need to get to the equivalence point and then add 80% of that amount of KHP. What do I mean by that? I'm not going to show you the calculation because at this point you should be able to calculate certain things on your own. 
what we need to do is we need to figure out um, for the amount of moles, you got to calculate the moles of KHP first, and you can look up the molar mass if that's helpful if it wasn't given here. For the amount of moles of KHP, how many moles of NaOH do you need? And then using that to figure out the volume of, of a one molar solution. So I'm going to pause the video right now and I'm going to do those calculations myself and then I'll show you what that would look like. Okay, so here are my calculations for um, figuring out what, um, how much NaOH I would need to add in order for there for me to add 80% of the amount needed for the neutral complete neutralization of KHP. So first, I get my moles of KHP. The according to the balanced chemical equation, it's a one to one molar ratio. So one mole of KHP gives you one mole of NaOH. Um, the volume of the NaOH then will be 19 milliliters. 80% of 19 milliliters is 15.5. And after adding 15.5 milliliters, uh, the burette should read this. All right. So, um, by the way, I think this is something that is missing in your virtual lab, the balance equation for um, the um, reaction. I'm going to pause this and add it real quick so you have it and you see what it looks like. Okay. So here's the balanced chemical reaction equation. I wrote it at the top. Um, and so as you can see here, according to balanced chemical equation, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium hydroxide to KHP. All right, so that means the moles of KHP equals the moles of NaOH. Once you have the moles of NaOH, you can use the molarity equation to calculate the volume of NaOH um, in a one molar solution. Remember, we're not sure if it's exactly one molar, so that's what we're trying to find out. But we can approximate and say it's, it's about one molar, and that's why we're using the one molar here. That gives us 19 milliliters, because um, remember the volume we get is in liters. Sorry, this should be liters, and we convert that to milliliters. Once we know the volume in milliliters, um, we go ahead and figure out what's 80% of that. And then um, we, the way we do that is multiply that by 0.8. And that gives us about 15.2 milliliters, which I just approximate to 15.5 to make my life easier. And then what I want to know is kind of predict, like, what should the burette read after I add the 15.5? This is not necessarily, this is not necessary for the virtual lab, but in reality, if you were adding it, you would want to know what, where you should end your burette at. So what I do is I take my initial burette reading, which we said was 6.7, that's in our data table, and I add the 15 to that, and then that gives me the volume readings in milliliters. Okay, I'm just going to make this correction because it should be liters. All right. Cool. So if you need to pause the video to look at the calculations to do it on your own, you can. But I'm going to go ahead now and move into um, back to the work bench. So I want to add to this since I'm adding 80%, 15.5 milliliters. And I know I can add that safely without overshooting the endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And you'll notice it'll take me down to where I predicted, which was the 22.20 milliliters. Okay. Now at this point, then we want to start reducing the amount that we're adding. So um, what I like to do is use 0 0.05 milliliters and I just add that each time and I'm going to keep adding that until this turns pink. So now I'm going to do pour and it'll tell you th how much is transferred each time. I didn't need to record anything at this moment because um, we're not at the end point yet. I'm going to wait till it turns pink. So I'm going to keep adding. You'll notice as you're adding the, on the side the pH will change as well and that's helpful because that gives you a sense of how close you are to the equivalence point as well so i like to monitor that so it should be about seven when i when i reach the the end point here don't forget to keep monitoring this flask because once that turns pink you want to stop Just keep adding each time. Okay, so I can stop here. And we'll see that the volume reading at this point is 24.80. So that's what I'm gonna record down in my virtual lab data table as a final is 24. Now you have all of the information you need to determine the molarity of NOH. 
Um, we're going to continue. I'll show you how to do part two in the next video that's linked here, um, but I'm going to pause it now.